A joint stock company is a business entity in which shares of the company's stock can be bought and sold by shareholders. Each shareholder owns company stock in proportion, evidenced by their shares certificates of ownership. Shareholders are able to transfer their shares to others without any effects to the continued existence of the company. In modern day corporate law, the existence of a joint stock company is often synonymous with incorporation, possession of legal personality separate from shareholders, and limited liability. Shareholders are liable for the company's debts only to the value of the money they have invested in the company. Therefore, joint stock companies are commonly known as corporations or limited companies. Some jurisdictions still provide the possibility of registering joint stock companies without limited liability. In the United Kingdom and other countries that have adopted its model of company law, they are known as unlimited companies. In the United States, they are known simply as joint stock companies. Topic: <laughs> Advantages. Ownership refers to a large number of privileges. The company is managed on behalf of the shareholders by a board of directors, elected at an annual general meeting. The shareholders also vote to accept or reject an annual report and audited set of accounts. Individual shareholders can sometimes stand for directorships within the company if a vacancy occurs, but that is uncommon. The shareholders are usually liable for any of the company debts that extend beyond the company's ability to pay up to the amount of them. <laughs> Early joint stock companies Finding the earliest joint stock company is a matter of definition. The earliest records of joint stock company can be found in China during the Song Dynasty Around 1250 in France at Toulouse, 96 shares of the Société des Moulins du Basical, or Basical Milling Company were traded at a value that depended on the profitability of the mills the society owned, making it probably the first company of its kind in history. The Swedish company Stora has documented a stock transfer for an eighth of the company or more specifically, the mountain in which the copper resource was available as early as 1288. In more recent history, the earliest joint stock company recognised in England was the Company of Merchant Adventurers to New Lands, chartered in 1553 with 250 shareholders. Muscovy Company, which had a monopoly on trade between Moscow and London, was chartered soon after in 1555. The much more famous, wealthy and powerful English later British East India Company was granted an English royal charter by Elizabeth I on December 31, 1600, with the intention of favouring trade privileges in India. The Royal Charter effectively gave the newly created Honourable East India Company a 15-year monopoly on all trade in the East Indies. The company transformed from a commercial trading venture to one that ruled India and exploited its resources, as it acquired auxiliary governmental and military functions, until its dissolution. Soon afterwards, in 1602, the Dutch East India Company issued shares that were made tradable on the Amsterdam Stock Exchange. That invention enhanced the ability of joint stock companies to attract capital from investors, as they could now easily dispose their shares. In 1612, it became the first corporation in intercontinental trade with locked-in capital and limited liability. During the period of colonialism, Europeans, initially the British, trading with the Near East for goods, pepper and calico for example, enjoyed spreading the risk of trade over multiple sea voyages. The joint stock company became a more viable financial structure than previous guilds or state-regulated companies. The first joint stock companies to be implemented in the Americas were the London Company and the Plymouth Company. Transferable shares often earn positive returns on equity, which is evidenced by investment in companies like the British East India Company, which used the financing model to manage trade in India. Joint stock companies paid out divisions dividends to their shareholders by dividing up the profits of the voyage in the proportion of shares held. 
Divisions were usually cash, but when working capital was low and detrimental to the survival of the company, divisions were either postponed or paid out in remaining cargo, which could be sold by shareholders for profit. However, in general, incorporation was possible by royal charter or private act, and it was limited because of the government's jealous protection of the privileges and advantages thereby granted. As a result of the rapid expansion of capital-intensive enterprises in the course of the Industrial Revolution in Britain, many businesses came to be operated as unincorporated associations or extended partnerships, with large numbers of members. Nevertheless, membership of such associations was usually for a short term so their nature was constantly changing. Consequently, registration and incorporation of companies, without specific legislation, was introduced by the Joint Stock Companies Act 1844. Initially, companies incorporated under this act did not have limited liability, but it became common for companies to include a limited liability clause in their internal rules. In the case of Hallett v. Dowdell, the English Court of the Exchequer held that such clauses bound people who have notice of them. Four years later, the Joint Stock Companies Act 1856 provided for limited liability for all joint stock companies provided, among other things, that they included the word limited in their company name. The landmark case of Salomon v. A. Salomon & Co. Ltd. established that a company with legal liability, not being a partnership, had a distinct legal personality that was separate from that of its individual shareholders. Topic. Corporate law The existence of a corporation requires a special legal framework and body of law that specifically grants the corporation legal personality, and it typically views a corporation as a fictional person, a legal person, or a moral person as opposed to a natural person which shields its owners shareholders from corporate. Losses or liabilities, losses are limited to the number of shares owned. It furthermore creates an inducement to new investors, marketable stocks and future stock issuance. Corporate statutes typically empower corporations to own property, sign binding contracts, and pay taxes in a capacity separate from that of its shareholders, who are sometimes referred to as members. The corporation is also empowered to borrow money, both conventionally and directly to the public, by issuing interest-bearing bonds. Corporations subsist indefinitely. Death comes only by absorption takeover, or bankruptcy. According to Lord Chancellor Haldane, A corporation is an abstraction. It has no mind of its own any more than it has a body of its own. Its active and directing will must consequently be sought in the person of somebody who is really the directing mind and will of the corporation, the very ego and center of the personality of the corporation. This directing will is embodied in a corporate board of directors. The legal personality has two economic implications. It grants creditors as opposed to shareholders or employees priority over the corporate assets upon liquidation. Second, corporate assets cannot be withdrawn by its shareholders, and assets of the firm cannot be taken by personal creditors of its shareholders. The second feature requires special legislation and a special legal framework, as it cannot be reproduced via standard contract law. The regulations most favorable to incorporation include Topic. Financial disclosure In many jurisdictions, corporations whose shareholders benefit from limited liability are required to publish annual financial statements and other data so that creditors who do business with the corporation are able to assess the credit worthiness of the corporation and cannot enforce claims against shareholders. Shareholders, therefore, experience some loss of privacy in return for limited liability. That requirement generally applies in Europe, but not in common law jurisdictions, except for publicly traded corporations for which financial disclosure is required for investor protection. Topic: <laughs> Corporate taxation. 
In many countries, corporate profits are taxed at a corporate tax rate, and dividends paid to shareholders are taxed at a separate rate. Such a system is sometimes referred to as double taxation because any profits distributed to shareholders will eventually be taxed twice. One solution, followed by as in the case of the Australian and UK tax systems, is for the recipient of the dividend to be entitled to a tax credit to address the fact that the profits represented by the dividend have already been taxed. The company profit being passed on is thus effectively taxed only at the rate of tax paid by the eventual recipient of the dividend. In other systems, dividends are taxed at a lower rate than other income for example, in the U.S., or shareholders are taxed directly on the corporation's profits, while dividends are not taxed for example, S-corporations in the U.S. <laughs> Closely held corporations and publicly traded corporations The institution most often referenced by the word corporation is publicly traded, which means that the company's shares are traded on a public stock exchange, for example, the New York Stock Exchange or NASDAQ in the United States, whose shares of stock of corporations are bought and sold by and to the general public. Most of the largest businesses in the world are publicly traded corporations. However, the majority of corporations are privately held, or closely held, so there is no ready market for the trading of shares. Many such corporations are owned and managed by a small group of businesspeople or companies, but the size of such a corporation can be as vast as the largest public corporations. Closely held corporations have some advantages over publicly traded corporations. A small, closely held company can often make company changing decisions much more rapidly than a publicly traded company, as there will generally be fewer voting shareholders, and the shareholders would have common interests. A publicly traded company is also at the mercy of the market, with capital flow in and out based not only on what the company is doing but also on what the market and even what the competitors, major and minor, are doing. However, publicly traded companies also have advantages over their closely held counterparts. Publicly traded companies often have more working capital and can delegate debt throughout all shareholders. Therefore, shareholders of publicly traded company will each take a much smaller hit to their returns as opposed to those involved with a closely held corporation. Publicly traded companies, however, can suffer from that advantage. A closely held corporation can often voluntarily take a hit to profit with little to no repercussions if it is not a sustained loss. A publicly traded company often comes under extreme scrutiny if profit and growth are not evident to stockholders, thus stockholders may sell, further damaging the company. Often, that blow is enough to make a small public company fail. Often, communities benefit from a closely held company more so than from a public company. A closely held company is far more likely to stay in a single place that has treated it well even if that means going through hard times. Shareholders can incur some of the damage the company may receive from a bad year or slow period in the company profits. Closely held companies often have a better relationship with workers. In larger, publicly traded companies, often after only one bad year, the first area to feel the effects is the workforce with layoffs or worker hours, wages or benefits being cut. Again, in a closely held business the shareholders can incur the profit damage rather than passing it to the workers. The affairs of publicly traded and closely held corporations are similar in many respects. The main difference in most countries is that publicly traded corporations have the burden of complying with additional securities laws, which especially in the US may require additional periodic disclosure with more stringent requirements, stricter corporate governance standards as well as additional procedural obligations in connection with major corporate transactions, for example, mergers or events, for example, elections of directors. A closely held corporation may be a subsidiary of another other corporation its parent company, which may itself be either a closely held or a public corporation. In some jurisdictions, the subsidiary of a listed public corporation is also defined as a public corporation for example, in Australia. <laughs> 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 
Topic by country. Topic Australia. In Australia corporations are registered and regulated by the Commonwealth Government through the Australian Securities and Investments Commission. Corporations law has been largely codified in the Corporations Act 2001. Topic: <inaudible> Brazil. In Brazil there are many different types of legal entities, sociedades, but the two most common ones commercially speaking are I Sociedade Limitada, identified by LTDA or Limitada after the company's name, equivalent to the British Limited Liability Company, and e Sociedade Anonima or Companhia, identified by SA or Companhia in the company's name, equivalent to the British Public Limited Company. The LTDA is mainly governed by the new Civil Code, enacted in 2002, and the SA by law 6.404, dated December 15, 1976, as amended. <inaudible> Bulgaria In Bulgaria, a joint stock company is called a Aktionerno Druzestvo or AD Bulgarian, Aktionerno Druzestvo or AD. Canada In Canada both the federal government and the provinces have corporate statutes, and thus a corporation may be incorporated either provincially or federally. Many older corporations in Canada stem from Acts of Parliament passed before the introduction of general corporation law. The oldest corporation in Canada is the Hudson's Bay Company, though its business has always been based in Canada, its royal charter was issued in England by King Charles II in 1670, and became a Canadian charter by amendment in 1970 when it moved its corporate headquarters from London to Canada. Federally recognized corporations are regulated by the Canada Business Corporations Act. Czech Republic and Slovakia The Czech form of the public limited company is called Akciava Spoleknost AS, and its private counterpart is called Spoleknost s Rusným omizanim SRO. The Slovak equivalents are called Akciava Spoleknost AS, and Spoleknost s Rusným obmedzenim SRO. German-speaking countries Germany, Austria, Switzerland and Liechtenstein recognize two forms of company limited by shares, the Aktiengesellschaft AG, analogous to public limited companies or corporations in US, CAN in the English-speaking world, and the Gesellschaft MIT Beschränkte Haftung GmbH, similar to the modern private limited company. Italy Italy recognizes three types of company limited by shares, the public limited company Societa per Azioni, or SPA, the private limited company Societa a Responsibilita Limitata, or SRL, and the publicly traded partnership Societa in Accomendita per Azioni, or SAPA. The latter is a hybrid of the limited partnership and public limited company, having two categories of shareholders, some with and some without limited liability, and is rarely used in practice. <laughs> <laughs> Japan In Japan, both the state and local public entities under the Local Autonomy Act now 47 prefectures, made in the 19th century and municipalities are considered to be corporations, far rain hojin. Non-profit corporations may be established under the civil code. The term, company, huishi kaisha or chiyikagyo is used to refer to business corporations. 
The predominant form is the kabushiki gaisha, zhushi huishi used by public corporations as well as smaller enterprises. Mochiban kaisha, chifen huishi a form for smaller enterprises, are becoming increasingly common. Between 2002 and 2008, the intermediary corporation, Jung Jian Fa Rain Chu Kan Hojin, existed to bridge the gap between for profit companies and non governmental and non profit organizations. <laughs> Norway In Norway, a joint stock company is called an Akshaselskap, abbreviated as a special and by far less common form of joint stock companies, intended for companies with a large number of shareholders, is the publicly traded joint stock companies, called Allmenarkshaselskap and abbreviated ASA. A joint stock company must be incorporated, has an independent legal personality and limited liability, and is required to have a certain capital upon incorporation. Ordinary joint stock companies must have a minimum capital of 30,000 Norwegian kroner upon incorporation, which was reduced from 100,000 in 2012. Publicly traded joint stock companies must have a minimum capital of 1 million Norwegian kroner. Romania In Romania, a joint stock company is called Societate Piactiani. According to Law 31 1991, there are two types of joint stock companies Societatea Piactiani and Societate in Commandita Piactiani. Russia C. Open Joint Stock Company OJSC. Topic Spain. In Spain, there are two types of companies with limited liability: I. S. L. or Sociedad Limitada, a private limited company, and E. S. A. or Sociedad Anonima, similar to a public limited company. Topic Ukraine. There exist several types of joint stock companies Ukrainian, and Tovaristvo, and Tovaristvo, in Ukraine. Due to specifics of the Soviet economy, all enterprises in the Soviet Republic as the rest of the Soviet Union were state-owned and private entrepreneurship was strictly prohibited and criminally prosecuted. Following the Gorbachev-initiated broad-spectrum reforms perestroika, there was introduced a term of causerashit and permission for organization of public economic entities called cooperatives. Following dissolution of the Soviet Union, Ukraine's economy along with the rest former Soviet republics was further reformed to more liberal. Along with private entrepreneurship, many state-owned companies were privatized, primarily by the former party's apparatchiks which gave a rise of another term, red directors. Many companies started to be sold at open market and commercialized. Those companies were transformed in joint stock companies by selling their shares for mutual cooperation and investment. As in the rest former Soviet republics predominantly Russia in Ukraine were created following commercial companies National Joint Stock Company Open Joint Stock Company Closed Joint Stock Company In 2009 further reforms were introduced and open joint stock companies were forced to be restructured as public joint stock company Ukrainian, publicny and tovaristvo publicny and tovaristvo or private joint stock company Ukrainian, privatna akkina and tovaristvo privatan akkina and tovaristvo minimum amount of share capital is 1250 minimum wages as of the 1st of January 2017 4 million Ukrainian hryvnias or or States dollars Ukraine National Securities and Stock Market Commission is the main stock market state authority. <laughs> United Kingdom Most companies are regulated by the Companies Act 2006 or the Northern Ireland equivalent. 
The most common type of company is the private limited company, limited, or limited. Private limited companies can either be limited by shares or by guarantee. Other corporate forms include the public limited company, PLC, and the private unlimited company. Some corporations, both public and private sector, are formed by Royal Charter or Act of Parliament. A special type of corporation is a corporation sole, which is an office held by an individual natural person, the incumbent, but which has a continuing legal entity separate from that person. Topic: <laughs> United States. Several types of conventional corporations exist in the United States. Generically, any business entity that is recognized as distinct from the people who own it i.e., is not a sole proprietorship or a partnership is a corporation. This generic label includes entities that are known by such legal labels as association, organization, and limited liability company, as well as corporations proper. Only a company that has been formally incorporated according to the laws of a particular state is called corporation. A corporation was defined in the Dartmouth College case of 1819, in which Chief Justice Marshall of the United States Supreme Court stated that, "...a corporation is an artificial being, invisible, intangible, and existing only in contemplation of the law." A corporation is a legal entity, distinct and separate from the individuals who create and operate it. As a legal entity the corporation can acquire, own, and dispose of property in its own name like buildings, land and equipment. It can also incur liabilities and enter into contracts like franchising and leasing. American corporations can be either profit-making companies or non-profit entities. Tax-exempt non-profit corporations are often called 501 C 3 corporation, after the section of the Internal Revenue Code that addresses the tax exemption for many of them. In some states, such as Colorado, a corporation may represent itself pro se in courts of law in some situations the federal government can only create corporate entities pursuant to relevant powers in the U.S. Constitution. Thus, virtually all corporations in the U.S. are incorporated under the laws of a particular state. A major exception to the federal nonparticipation in the incorporation of private businesses is in banking. Under the National Bank Act, banks may receive charters from the federal government as national banks, subjecting them to the regulation of the Federal Office of the Controller of the Currency rather than state banking regulators. All states have some kind of general corporation law. California, Delaware, Kansas, Nevada and Ohio actually use that exact name which authorizes the formation of private corporations without having to obtain a charter for each one from the state legislature as was formerly the case in the 19th century. Many states have separate, self-contained laws authorizing the formation and operation of certain specific types of corporations that are wholly independent of the state general corporation law. For example, in California, nonprofit corporations are incorporated under the Nonprofit Corporation Law, and in Illinois, insurers are incorporated under the Illinois Insurance Code. Corporations are created by filing the requisite documents with a particular state government. The process is called incorporation, referring to the abstract concept of clothing the entity with a veil of artificial personhood embodying, or corporating it, corpus being the Latin word for body. Only certain corporations, including banks, are chartered. Others simply file their articles of incorporation with the state government as part of a registration process. Once incorporated, a corporation has artificial personhood everywhere it may operate, until such time as the corporation may be dissolved. A corporation that operates in one state while being incorporated in another is a foreign corporation. This label also applies to corporations incorporated outside of the United States. Foreign corporations must usually register with the Secretary of State's office in each state to lawfully conduct business in that state. 
A corporation is legally a citizen of the state or other jurisdiction in which it is incorporated except when circumstances direct the corporation be classified as a citizen of the state in which it has its head office, or the state in which it does the majority of its business. Corporate business law differs dramatically from state to state. Many prospective corporations choose to incorporate in a state whose laws are most favorable to its business interests. Many large corporations are incorporated in Delaware, for example, without being physically located there because that state has very favorable corporate tax and disclosure laws. Companies set up for privacy or asset protection often incorporate in Nevada, which does not require disclosure of share ownership. Many states, particularly smaller ones, have modeled their corporate statutes after the Model Business Corporation Act, one of many model sets of law prepared and published by the American Bar Association. As juristic persons, corporations have certain rights that attach to natural persons. The vast majority of them attach to corporations under state law, especially the law of the state in which the company is incorporated, since the corporation's very existence is predicated on the laws of that state. A few rights also attach by federal constitutional and statutory law, but they are few and far between compared to the rights of natural persons. For example, a corporation has the personal right to bring a lawsuit as well as the capacity to be sued and, like a natural person, a corporation can be libeled. Harvard College, an undergraduate school of Harvard University, formerly the President and Fellows of Harvard College also known as the Harvard Corporation, is the oldest corporation in the Western Hemisphere. Founded in 1636, the second of Harvard's two governing boards was incorporated by the Great and General Court of Massachusetts in 1650. Significantly, Massachusetts itself was a corporate colony at that time, owned and operated by the Massachusetts Bay Company until it lost its charter in 1684 so Harvard College is a corporation created by a corporation. Many nations have modeled their own corporate laws on American business law. Corporate law in Saudi Arabia, for example, follows the model of New York State corporate law. In addition to typical corporations in the United States, the federal government, in 1971 passed the Alaska Native Claims Settlement Act which authorized the creation of 12 regional native corporations for Alaska natives and over 200 village corporations that were entitled to a settlement of land and cash. In addition to the 12 regional corporations, the legislation permitted a 13th regional corporation without a land settlement for those Alaska natives living out of the state of Alaska at the time of passage of ANCSA. Other business entities Almost every recognized type of organization carries out some economic activities for example, the family. Other organizations that may carry out activities that are generally considered to be business exist under the laws of various countries Consumers Cooperative Holding Company Limited Company Limited, Limited Liability Company LLC, Limited Liability Limited Partnership LLP Limited Liability Partnership LLP Limited Partnership LP Low Profit Limited Liability Company L3C Not for Profit Corporation Open Joint Stock Company OJSC Partnership Sole Proprietorship Trust Company Trust Law Topic. See also Actisalscab Types of business entity